When fitting a mathematical model to observational data, it's always important for us to choose the most appropriate model to go along with our observable data. But when we don't know what model we want to use, more often than not, individuals will choose a polynomial to fit to their observable data. Alrighty folks, welcome to another video where we are going to discuss the linear algebra behind polynomial fitting. So here we have the equation for a polynomial. We can have any nth order polynomial and it'll look a little something like this. But that's the big advantage of a polynomial. We can just start tacking on additional terms and get different behavior from our model. And the procedure for fitting the polynomial isn't too different. If you recall from before, we fit a line or really just a first order polynomial to some observable data that I generated when I was testing random number generators. This is a Rust random number generator where we were generating different amounts of random numbers as our x values and the uh, runtime was our y values right here. And we're going to take a look at the same data set and start fitting some polynomials to it to see what is the most appropriate model to fit to this observational data set because you can see it looks very linear but it's not perfectly linear. And the procedure is not changing really at all from the line fit, we're going to take our polynomial model, we're going to take our observable data, we're going to construct a linear system, and we are going to find uh, more often than not a least squares solution to this linear system, which is going to give us the coefficients of our model, which then we can plug back into our model. And so let's recall what ended up happening for the first order polynomial or the equation of a line. We took our coefficients that we were interested in and we stuck them in our x vector right here. Obviously we are finding uh, that x vector when we solve a linear system, so it's very important that we take a look at it. Uh, adding those in there. We put all of our observed data here in our B vector. Those are just our Y values. And we use the corresponding X values right here to construct our A matrix. This is our X to the zeroth column. And this is our X to the first power column. So uh, whenever we plug anything in here for this X to the zero column, well, you, you plug anything in and raise it to the zeroth power, it's just one. So everything in this first column is always just going to be one when we're considering lines or polynomials. And when we talk about this second column here, well, it's just x to the first power. So any x value that you plug in is just going to be that same value out. So if we move on to the second order polynomial, we are now adding a coefficient in here. This second order coefficient is something that we need to solve for. So of course, we are adding that to our x vector. And we need to make our dimensions work. So we add in a third column. And in this column, we are squaring all of our x values that come in. So our first two columns aren't changing at all. We're still plugging in the corresponding x data to go in with our y data for each one of the rows, except now we are using another column where we are going to square that x value as we plug it in. If we generalize this for an nth order polynomial, we are going to see our first two columns, they're always going to kind of stay the same and it's going to go all the way out to x to the n. We are going to need to handle all of the coefficients, and so we're going to have n plus 1 coefficients. So how does that affect our code? Well, in Python, this doesn't change that much. If you saw the line fitting video, the code will look very similar. And of course, all of it is available at the GitHub link in the description down below. So if you want to see this code or any of the plotting code that I will not show you in this video, you can go to the GitHub link in the description down below. You'll be able to see all the different code that's there. I've defined this new function here called polyfit. It accepts some X data and Y data, and we also need this order parameter to let it know what order polynomial we want to fit to our data that we're passing in. All of that Y data, again, goes into our B vector. We're generating an A matrix based upon the uh, the order of everything. Remember, it, it goes as N plus 1 or the order plus 1 for the number of columns. And we're using this numpy1s command because then we don't have to change anything in the first column of our A matrix. Now, what I've done here is I've created a loop to go through and change the values of our columns for our A matrix right here. And we're going one column after the next. So we are going to get our exponential taken in right here. Then we're just using the numpy least squares function to obtain a least squares solution. Remember, we have to transpose that B vector because when we put it in up here, it is just 
a row vector. We need it as a column vector. And then I have a little bit of error handling code here, which we are going to discuss in a few moments. Now for the actual observable data, remember we're using that runtime data from testing random number generators. So I'm reading that in here with pandas. And what we're going to test is we're going to test a first order polynomial all the way up to a fourth order polynomial because the computer is going to stop counting at five. And we're doing that because we want to figure out what is the most appropriate model to fit to our observable data. We fed a line to it last time and it looked very linear in nature, but we want to choose the most appropriate model. And this is the big selling point behind the polynomial. You can just start adding on more terms and see what model is the most appropriate. So uh, you can see that we're calling our polyfit function right here, and we are going through each one of the different orders, and we are outputting our vector norm and our coefficients. Now if we take a look at running this code, you can see that for the first order polynomial, if we take a snapshot of the results from the line fitting video, you can see nothing's really changed. Uh, the vector norm is still fairly reasonable. Remember, with this vector norm, the closer we get to zero, the better our solution is, or the more appropriate our model is, or the better our model is. So if we move on to the second order polynomial, you can see actually that this vector norm it gets a little bit smaller, which indicates that it's actually a better fitting model, you know, a more appropriate model for us to be using. If we move on to the third order polynomial, you can see it even gets just ever so marginally smaller, meaning that the third order polynomial is right now the most appropriate or the best model for us to fit to this observable data. But wait, we have this warning in here. We'll get back to that warning in a moment. But if we take a look at the fourth order polynomial fit just based off of the vector norm, well, our norm is now much larger, indicating that this fit isn't that great. Let's take a look at the plots and see what that all means. So why do I have this error handling code in here? And why for the third order polynomial did it say warning potential overfit? In fact, it even said that for the fourth order polynomial. There's an argument to be made sometimes that we are overfitting a model to our observable data. In other words, uh, we don't really have the most appropriate model. And this is where the big debate comes in. Uh, no matter what model you end up choosing, someone will always argue with you that the model that you are fitting to your observable data is not appropriate. You'll always find one person that doesn't think the model that you're fitting is the actual most appropriate model. And so you kind of have to leave it up to you. Now we have the vector norms that are really fantastic, but one of the problems with this numpy least source function is that if it believes you are overfitting, it actually won't compute a vector norm. So we have to add this exception code in here to compute a vector norm manually and output that. So even right now, NumPy is kind of, you know, I, I would say based off of the vector norms that the third order polynomial is the most appropriate one, but NumPy disagrees. And so I'm already having someone disagree with me here, but overfitting is a discussion topic for another video. If we take a look at plotting these models out with all of the coefficients, they kind of start to look like this. And yeah, you can see right away that this fourth order polynomial term does not fit at all appropriately with our observable data. So we are just going to completely toss this one out of the running. And we're gonna focus on just on the first, second, and third order polynomial fits. Now let's take a look at this first order polynomial. With this first order polynomial fit or the line fit from before, we you can see qualitatively we're a little bit high down here. We are sort of leveling out a little low down here in the middle, and then we come back perfectly in the middle at the top right here. I think it's a really good fit. The vector norm suggests it's a pretty good fit, but let's take a look and see what happens in the behavior between the first and second order polynomial fits. Take really good care to look down here at this uh, at the beginning of this fit. Do you see that? We'll do it again. We'll do it one more time. You can see that with the second order polynomial fit, we actually get our line or our polynomial that we're fitting here to come down a little bit. And so it's kind of falling right in line. Now it still kind of gets a little bit low down here in the middle, but it still, it still fits really well. And you don't necessarily see that line coming up super high at the beginning. If we take a look at the third order polynomial fit, I can't really see much of a difference. And again, we're talking about just a marginal improvement with this third order polynomial fit that you probably really wouldn't even see too big of a difference anyways. And so now we have these plots and we have these norms to go off of. And I think that there's a pretty convincing 
case to be made for the third order polynomial fit or the second order polynomial fit, whichever one you want to choose. If you're worried about a potential overfit, well, go with the second order polynomial. If you're not super concerned, I'm probably not super concerned. I know some people are going to disagree with me on that. I'll choose the third order polynomial fit. Ultimately, it's a little bit more math that I have to do on the back end, but the third order polynomial actually works really well. And the whole reason, again, why we want to choose the most appropriate model to go with our data is more often than not, we are going to be using this model that the machine is learning uh, the coefficients to. And oftentimes that is going to be used for some kind of machine learning optimization procedure. So we are almost assuredly going to have to do a video, a standalone video on that. So if you want to see that, consider subscribing as we are absolutely going to have dedicated videos to interpolation and extrapolation. If you're watching this video in the future, those might already be out. So consider subscribing and taking a look at those. Folks, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, do not hesitate to let me know in the comment section on whatever video platform you happen to be watching this on. Again, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again next time.